Uh, greetings YouTubers and train lifers. Uh, going to do a, a explanation video on how to uh, install a blinking uh, LED uh, for a beacon light in a uh, DC powered locomotive. Uh, if it was DCC he would have the luxury of using a regular LED and uh, using a decoder to set it up but uh, a Frank off of Train Life asked me to draw him a diagram which I did and then he would like a little further explanation so I'm going to do a how to of exactly how to do this. The first thing you need is a blinking LED uh, for uh, HO scale uh, I'm using a 3 millimeter this is just a plain yellow LED with no blinking uh, effect uh, and that's due to the fact that I don't have any uh, blinking LEDs uh, and I'm trying to make this as simple as possible Frank has already bought a yellow blinking beacon light LED and uh, so we're going to show him how to hook it up and then prove that it works so to start with I have a three millimeter yellow LED explanation of the negative side is always the shorter side of the LED the positive leg is always longer also on the side of the LED which you probably can't see on the camera there's a flat spot on the negative and it's got a rim around the bottom that is broken right there and it's flat uh, that always says that this is a negative in case the leads have been cut or it's installed and you don't know which is which also it's pretty simple on a DC LED won't work backwards so if you put the resistor on here or you're using like a 1.5 volt battery this thing will not light if you hook it up backwards so enough of that said let's get down to it uh, first thing we're going to do is prepare the LED for this this job I'm going to cut the two leads off uh, and shorten them up so what I do is there's a little knot on on the line of this LED I cut the negative a little shorter than the positive so that I don't mess up I calculated his uh, resistor he can use a resistor I'm uh, going to use a, uh, a power supply of 0 to 17 volts which is a typical uh, DC power supply so uh, I'm going to use a the smallest resistor with, that I recommend using which is a 460 ohm resistor you, uh, you can use up to 680 volts but doing being as he's going to be using DC and increasing the track voltage he wants this to start working as soon as possible so we want it at the lowest voltage possible which will be this uh, uh, 460 ohm resistor the lower the resistor the faster it's going to come on at a lower voltage uh, he might want to increase this to a half or use two quarter watt uh, resistors but uh, I built one of these circuits already and it doesn't seem to overheat the resistor nor the LED so I think you'll be fine with this quarter watt 460 ohm resistor so to continue on uh, one of the first things we need to do is shorten the leads on this you don't need them this long so I have them at approximately that long now uh, the first thing we want to do is heat up our soldering iron and uh, I'm using a battery operated one here so they don't have cords hanging in the way or whatever you need to heat your iron up which most people are going to have a uh, one that plugs into the wall so it's going to be hot immediately when, you know, when they're ready to use it and we want to tin the leads of this LED which is to apply solder to them so that the resistors and other things will, will, will attach very quickly uh, and you get a good secure connection so applying this and now my resistor is attached to the LED okay so to the next phase uh, basically what I tried to explain to him if you take some diodes and these are um, regulating diodes they uh, 
or rectifying, I apologize there, or rectifying diodes, voltage comes through and will pass through this diode in this direction with basically no resistance, very small resistance. The silver band indicates negative, so positive, it always flows from positive to negative, but it will not flow back the other way without until it finally destroys this it will hold the voltage out so due to the fact that we want power to flow from either side of the locomotive from from the positive and negative according to whether you're going reverse or forward we want power to flow through and feed the positive side of the LED but not come back when and create a direct short if it would flow through so we're going to hook two negatives that are the two silver bands. We're going to twist these wires together to make a solid connection. And then I'm going to clip them off because I don't need them very long on this end. Going to heat them, going to tent them. And this is why I need to turn my other soldering iron on and use it where it's constantly hot. This one takes a little bit to heat up. Works excellent though for real small circuit surface mount resistors and LEDs and things because it is it's got a tiny point on it and it it doesn't overheat them near as quick as, as a regular soldering iron. Okay, so I've got that one connected. Now I've already tinned the positive side of this LED, so I want to attach this directly on here to this uh, diode and I'm going to have to have some more solder so put a blob on here I didn't quite get enough on my components set done now now that this is set power will come here go through the, the either either lead the ground where voltage would flow through and make a short uh, on one or the other uh, will now be blocked so only positive voltage will go to the positive lead of this LED so I'm going to turn them out like that. Now, we need to make another pair. This pair, on the other hand, we need voltage to come through here, through the LED, through the resistor, go to ground to complete the circuit, but we don't want it to come back the other direction. We want it to go this way, but we don't want it to go this way. So we turn the uh, diodes the other direction and basically you can remember this by the silver stripe means ground it points towards ground away from power a uh, simple way to do this so we, we twist these leads together trim them off we need to heat them up and tend them